What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Chines. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Chris Abacon. What's going on, everybody? What's up? So welcome to another episode. So this should be your Wednesday episode. So if you have not already, please check out Monday. Or we're still discussing the healthcare industry and what's going on with United Health. Uh, and then on Tuesday, we're having a discussion about Alabama and how they're suffering from a distributed denial of service attack, um, which is shutting down a lot of their uh, public systems, so to speak. And then uh, on Thursday, I'll have on Jacob Hill. So Jacob Hill is a uh, the founder and podcast host of the GRC Academy. So if you're uh, big into uh, the defense industrial base, CMMC, all that good stuff, definitely check that one out. Uh, as well as uh, we talk about entrepreneurship and all, all the above, right? Really good in-depth conversation with Jacob. Uh, so definitely come back for Thursday. And then Friday, everything else, movies, books, games, TV, all the things. So it's where we unwind for the week. Hit us up on all the social medias that go by our name, the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW or ask us as P. You can check us out now in a uh, different format. So if you want to read, watch and listen to every episode, you can check us out on LinkedIn as well as on medium. And then there's a weekly newsletter now where we deliver it to your inbox. So one stop shop, you can't get away from us. All right. Love us. Subscribe. <laughs> Without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody, this text article is from darkreading.com, uh, written by Nathan Eddy. It is titled, TikTok Ban Raises Data Security Control Questions. So the House, uh, the United States House of Representatives, has already uh, has already moved forward on a bill, right, where they talk about uh, ban points and talk about the porousness of government control in the digital age, right? So what they're talking about is TikTok. So TikTok um, being uh, foreign owned by ByteDance is the name of the company, I believe, right? Yeah, Chinese parent company, ByteDance. Um, there's been some concern um, about it, right? Because it is not uh, under American control, um, there's worries about, uh, you know, different uh, cyber things, right? Doors and things of that nature. And TikTok could be, um, could be introducing uh, into, uh, into America to where people are unwittingly um, becoming attack vectors, I guess you could say, for China. And so what they're talking about is they want to talk about the company divesting amongst American companies. Right? So it's one of those things where they're not saying you can't have TikTok at all, but they want it to be under American control, right, what they're, what they're going through. And, and here's my question about this, right? So like for, for discussion's sake, like is this, is this actually something that's considered to be uh, like in defense of the nation, like is is that why they're doing this, right? Or is there something else to this, right? They're worried about disinformation, you know. And and Ryan, we you've talked about election season coming up, you know what I mean? Like us needing to 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 have that type of uh, dependability, people to have that dependability and and and, and um, trust, you know, in in the information that they're they're reading, right? Like I don't I don't think you should be getting your soul. To, your sole source of information should not be social media anyway, right? Like, <laughs> like that. That's not what you should be doing. Um, I have a different stance on this on on people that uh, that talk about you know disinformation is so bad. It's like, well, the information is not. It's not like it's being held from you. You're just not seeking it out from other sources, right? But TikTok is one that um, even the Department of Defense, um, like they've banned it on any type of uh, uh, government uh, devices, you know what I mean? Like you cannot have TikTok on any type of government phones, uh, computers, things of that nature, right? So this is something that has been in the works with the Department of Defense for a long time, you know what I mean? It's one of those things. It's highly suggested um, that you don't uh, you don't even use it, right? Like me being the anti-social media guy, I was like, yep, I got it. I'm on that, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so for me, it's not a big deal, but um, this is something that... Um, it, there, there is some good and some bad to it, right? One of the things they talk about in this article is how um, you have small business, they, they call them small business people that are making money off TikTok, right? As with any social media, right? There'd be YouTube, Facebook, you know what I mean? Things of that nature. Um, what is the impact going to be to to people that are these small business owners, like call them small business owners, um, that are using TikTok to get their message out there, to get their product out there, whatever it may be. And the product could be them, right? 
I, I've seen some stuff on TikTok, even though I don't have the app, I've had stuff sent to me where I'm just like, whoa, like, uh, let me turn this off when my wife is around, you know what I mean? I didn't know it was going to be like this, you know what I mean? Like, no nudity or anything like that, but it's stuff that's just kind of like, ah, uh, that's dicey, you know what I mean? But that's how people are making their money, right? And and who am I to tell them not to do it that way, right? Like, make your money however you do. I'm not I'm not in anybody else's pockets and with their, whatever they want to do, you know what I'm saying? But. Like I said, like like I mentioned earlier um, in the segment here, like the House of Representatives has already gone forward with a bill. Um, the Senate may be a little bit harder of a pass, right, um, on whether or not they're going to go forward with this, with, with making sure TikTok is invested um, it, through American companies um, so that different, it, really so you can keep an eye on different things that are happening. Make sure you don't have any of those back doors. Make sure disinformation isn't running rampant, things of that nature. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what comes of this and, and, and how it's going to get handled. Um, I have my doubts on how this is going to go, but we'll see, right? I could be wrong on this. I've been wrong before in my life once. I was wrong one time in my life. <laughs> so so it's happened before. But, uh, you know, Chris, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, really, really first thoughts kind of continuing on your your, uh, your point is uh, uh, I want to put in the article that Adam Mayer Mare, how he says his name, the CISO of Article, he says that it's a hot TikTok represents a heightened threat beyond regulatory safeguards like you were saying he was stuck like he was specifically saying that the data they collect right the algorithm that they utilize to publicly shape opinion right with youth is quote complete impunity right with complete impunity really what it, what it comes down to is the demographics of tiktok right tiktok is the gen z it's the younger uh, Americans, it's their it's their uh, me- social media of choice. The less TikTok might seem more like it's just something you can see, but to that, Facebook, Instagram, that's for old guys, like like uh, Snapchat, that's for old people. I've heard uh, somebody from Gen Z telling me that Facebook is for boomers. So it, think about it like that. Now, um, really, it's shaping that public opinion, like what I was saying earlier in previous videos. Hey, it's election season's coming up soon. But there is a lot at play and it's in stake. Uh, additionally, in the article, it highlights Nar- Narayana Papu, CEO of Zendata, says that TikTok in the past has confirmed user is stored, user data is stored in China. But I did a little bit of digging and went into Actually, TikTok's little, I think it's more of their PR website. It's called TikTok US Data Security. It's a separately, it's a, it's a company that works strictly on myths and facts for TikTok. But what I found interesting is that um, here's something from their website, usds.tiktok.com. And quote, as in G2022, 100% of all user traffic is routed to the Oracle Cloud infrastructure in the United States today. And and access to that environment is exclusively managed by TikTok and U.S. data security. And then in quotes, we have begun the process of irredi- irrevertibly deleting historic protected user data in our own Virginia and Singapore data centers. Once the process is complete, it will be transferred over to essentially the United States data center. So that's the thing, right? You're saying that they're moving to this Oracle cloud, which is huge U.S. folks. So, you know, they can say all this stuff, but where's the assurance that this stuff is being done? Where are the, you know, the employees coming to deliver? Where's the third party audit that is not paid off by TikTok and says, hey, look, this is a, this is, this is a legitimately, you know, uh, this cloud is legitimate, all you must have is, uh, you know, within these two, uh, in data centers. But that does highlight the system interconnection. So this, this Oracle Cloud Australia is clearly connected to the, the Chinese, Singaporean data centers, European data centers, wherever they might be. Who, like, we don't know, like, where user data is traveling. They might be hosting the, these U, the U.S. data, but you know, assume it in this cloud. But there's so many interconnections and there's a lot of data that can travel throughout this entire world. And really, we're talking about harvesting data. We're talking about how these organizations are utilizing this data to, one, understand the thinking of our young Americans and how can we influence them on how can we market to them. And with that, there's a lot of responsibility that needs to come. There's a lot of, you know, effective um, marketing that can come to them, right? Because everything, like, a child's mind is so, is, is like a sponge. Like, anything they see on TikTok is considered real to them. You know, for that, like, there's nobody's getting out there. Uh, I'm not saying nobody, but it's not general law thing that they, you, know, you shouldn't be trusting TikTok as your first source of news. Because the fact is that uh, there's a lot of reactionary news out there to some, some sort of events. And, you know, 
kids that don't have an education or just don't understand the game. This stuff, you gotta look at all sides. But, look, in then hitting social media, you tend to, uh, social media tends to, uh, for views and clicks, tends to, uh, advertise or imp on your screen if that's what you like. But anything that's, you know, oh, on one side, you can see more of it and more of it and more of it and create a confirmation bias. So that's really what a danger in TikTok is. And really, the, the U.S. is oversized what they want to talk about. And then the one thing I want, do want to talk about as well is, it's just this good for now. It's just this good for you. And this, and that, as it buying signs is, how will they actually ban TikTok? I mean, they're going to take it off all the app stores. As they are, you know, are, are they going to just, you know, all, all the, all the traffic going to TikTok IP are going to be blacklisted on all, on all ISP? How is that going to happen? It's, it, there's already, the data is already out there. That's how assuming, is this going to happen? That's assuming they don't divest. So if they do not, correct, they, correct. No, we're not going to divest. We're not going to allow American entities in here to do these different things. That is what they're talking about doing. They're going to, they're going to levy, hopefully heavy fines, you know, to, you know, you know the, the, what, what's the Android store, whatever it's called, Google Play store, or whatever it is. Google I've been, Play out, of, yeah, I've been yeah. out of Android for so long now. I forgot the name of this. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> Google Play store, right? Apple's, Apple's <laughs> like that. They're going to in, incur heavy fines, but here's the thing. Those companies like, like, especially Apple, right? Like they're a $3 trillion company. You know what I mean? Like, how do you make these fines hurt? Like, if you're like, oh, I'm going to find you a billion dollars, you know what I mean? Like, the CEO might pull it out of his pocket. Like, hey, here's my black card. You know what I mean? I'll pay it right here. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's like Randy Moss with his straight cash, homie. That's how he pays his fines. You know what I mean? Like, like but seriously, though, like, like what, that. what are you going to do, you know what I mean, to make it hurt for them if they say, no, this is, this is too much of a moneymaker, right? Because, like, they're still making money, like, having it hosted you know, and, and putting it out there to their consumers, right? Like you keep people coming back to Apple, you know, to Google, whatever it may be. But yeah, if they do not divest, you're you're correct in that they they have to have a good plan on how are you how are you going to keep it out of people's hands at that point? You know what I mean? Like there's still going to be that you know time period. Yeah, they they divest and become you know operationally controlled by an American company, whatever it might be. But there are still ties to China. There are still ties to Singapore. I think Singapore is bad. But like, there's still ties to certain nation state actors that do want to harvest and hurt the United States. Like, it because inherently the the company is is finding its such roots. There are there's just some complexities and interconnection of data that's going to be difficult to calculate. This is a monumental task that just comes through, right? And you know. One last thing I did want to talk about was that I saw on local news, right? <laughs> local news the other day. There's kids, you know, you know, eighteen younger, you know, in college. They're actually like petitioning, sending. They're actually getting involved and in calling their senators or sending videos and you know, posting TikTok videos of themselves calling these senators' office members. I'm like, please don't ban it. But you know, it's interesting, like. It's almost unanimous that this battle is through right? both parties. This is going to go through this little Goku is set, and this will be signed by President Biden in, in, in the near future. So I am interested to see where this turns out. This is going to be one of those it's monumental privacy challenges of our time. It's going to be a case study for the next 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Um... So before I get into it, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, hopefully this one does good numbers as well. I don't know. People really are upset about TikTok. So <laughs> I'm also not on TikTok per se. I do have an account now where I'm trying to pull, put our clips on it uh, because I'm 170 million Americans are on TikTok. So why would I not post our clips on there as well? However, um, it's not letting me. So I think we've talked, we've bad mouthed them too much. <laughs> I'm on a list somewhere. They're like, nope. <laughs> right right security guy nope ask his p nope <laughs> uh so definitely like share subscribe all that good stuff uh and try to check us out on tiktok until it's banned um which i i foresee it happening i don't see why they would divest um they're making good money they can they can leverage our our uh population they can weaponize our population to fight as constituents because we, we joke and say it's, uh, it's all kids the vast majority is is younger in youth right so it's where do you uh go but i know plenty of people in my age or older who have moved on from facebook and, and ig to tiktok it's just 
the, the they prefer the content over there. And so it's it's all ages. So not not to um, just beat up the the younger generation, which would have no yeah. no real pull when it came to voting anyway, right? They can complain to their their uh, Congress person uh, and and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, they don't they don't vote. They don't put into the pot for these parties. So they really have no leverage except for their parents. So, so to jump on that, right? So this is this is why I doubt it. Chris, you say you think it's going to pass. I do not think it's going to pass the Senate because here's what you have to think about. So senators, their term is six years, right? So these children that are 16, 17, by the time their, tar- their term comes up and it's time for them to vote, they're going to be able to do so with a six-year term. House replaces itself every two years, right? Like those people are running every two years. As soon as they're elected, they're running again, right? Like that's that's their thing, right? So I, I, man, I don't, I don't want to get on here and say what I'm going to say. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get this banned. But the Senate is going to be a higher hurdle that I don't think, I don't think will pass. I don't think it'll happen, and I have my reasons for that. Hmm. Other than we'll we'll see, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting. So they have information that, like, so a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot has been disclosed about the 2020 election and how uh, Russia and, and other. Uh, state actors had their hand in a lot of disinformation when it came to Facebook, Instagram, as well as uh, uh, TikTok. If it, did, it, if, did it even exist in 2020? I don't even know, to be honest with you. I think it did. Um, it did. It did. But, but it, I don't think it had as much influence as it has now. Like, it's taking yeah. over my storm now. Yeah, um, since the pandemic, for sure. And, and, half, and half of that base in the Senate don't believe it. They believe it was fair. Right. And I'm not saying that it's not, but they also have the information. Like it's been disclosed by the NSA. It's been disclosed by CISA, uh, Department of Homeland Security, that it, it actually did take place. Like uh, and when it came to the, the big movement, like the BLM movement, like the vast majority of it was um, done by uh, legitimate people in, in the states, like funding and, and uh, uh, picketing and things of that nature. And standing in but then there are also ties to russia there are there were or, organizations that were, were uh, received funds to protest and later on found out that the money came from russia because russia wanted to cause uh disruption yeah. as well they, they, they wanted won. to be involved in the movement so so wouldn't they have to acknowledge this if they go through this wouldn't they have to acknowledge what they've been saying for the last four I think years they, had their, they can have their cake and eat it too they can say that tiktok is bad and the election was was uh uh rigged you can do both <laughs> You could be right. They know their audience. Yeah. You could be right. <laughs> you could do both. You can you can confuse the situation. Uh, but yeah, they, like we're not a political show. However, both parties agree that this is a problem, and only because of, or not only because, but a lot of it because of the information that they receive. Like they have more access than we have, and they've already disclosed things. That I'm just like baffled by that we allowed to happen. Like when it comes to the ability to spread disinformation and to uh, to to rally people, the flash mobs and things of that nature, uh, they have high influence not only through TikTok, which we don't control, but Facebook and IG, which are right here in the states. Like they pulled Zuckerberg to uh, to the Senate hearing, hearing, right? Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. They they have the ability to pull these people to Congress to ask them really dumb questions because they don't understand how technology works. But they all have law degrees, which blows my mind, right? They're very smart people. Technology, not their thing. <laughs> and the average age, of, like not to be ages, but the average age of uh, senators and Congress uh, men and women is pretty high, right? So they, they've they existed way before the internet existed. Uh, and uh, they, they might not quite understand it, but they have pages and things of that nature, which can help them to formulate these questions. I don't know why they keep asking dumb questions, but I digress. Um but the thing is that they do receive intel that other nations have an influence on our youth. They have an influence on our adult population. They're able to spread crazy information and get us all riled up to do some outrageous things, uh, regardless of, of your belief, if it was fair or not. Storming the Capitol is not cool. So, like, they have the ability to cause chaos within our border. They can't necessarily shoot an ICBM. They can't launch a jet. They can't send a sub and and breach our our borders. So I believe, uh, being um, a retired military, however, you can get us to punch each other in the face very easily through TikTok and other social media platforms. You can cause civil uh, unrest and disturbance, and no one could be held accountable for it because the 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 gentleman who is in charge of it, uh, he is not uh, Chinese or from China, right? But the company ByteDance is like they can pull 
his strings or anyone else's strings. Like, yeah, there's 1,500 people uh, in several buildings here in the States that handle uh, TikTok US, so to speak. However, like, who's keeping the lights on? It's it's the People's Republic of China. So that is the issue. And I, I think that that will not be clear. I don't believe China will divest. I don't, I don't believe they, they, even if they lose all 170 million of us, they still have the rest of the world. Like maybe the allies will also kick in. Like if the U.S. bans it, then maybe the the U.K. will jump on it. Maybe the the EU will jump on it. Uh, maybe, but still, at the end of the day, they still have a vast majority of, of of the youth. They will be okay. They can they can lose our our money and and be just fine. If anything, like now you have Zuckerberg is like foaming at the mouth, frothing at the mouth. Like I'm about to get all this money is coming back to me. Facebook's back on the map, baby. <laughs> MySpace is trying to figure out how, out how servers work. Servers They're trying to get up and running again. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're coming back. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's good for American companies if this gets shut down as well. So they're they're also putting their money in. And it reminds me of a, a funny scenario. I had a friend who um, his parents were were LDS, and when they were trying to pass, I forget what proposition it was for marijuana in California. His uh, his parents were involved in the uh, picketing and shutting down of, of the proposition. And who, who funded them? Seagram's. The alcohol companies didn't want weed to be legalized because it would cut into their profits. So it's the same thing here in the States. I'm sure the IGs and the Facebooks and the so on and so forth are definitely going to start putting in money to also help this movement get pushed because it, it, it's going to bring money back to their platforms because IG or I'm sorry, uh, TikTok is, is cutting into their, uh, their profits. So like it's, it's a win-win for us corporations. So they're going to put their money in, uh, the congressmen and women who will say some outrageous things on the outside internally have the Intel stating that this is a problem, right? They, they know that this can cause humongous disturbance if, China were to, to weaponize it, right? I'm not saying that they are weaponizing it, but we've seen other state actors do this to us during the George Floyd situation, during January 6th. Like, they are able to ramp us up pretty well. So what happens when you flip the switch on TikTok? So they know that this is a problem, so that's why it's going to be unanimously passed. I believe the, the ban will happen. I don't believe China will divest up. That's my two cents. So what do you, what do you guys think? <laughs> Did I shut it down? Yeah, no, you, no, I, yeah I, you shut it down. I, man. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to pursue that line because it'll be, become political. That's just, that's not. Oh, right. I got you. I got you. I, that's right, why I'm. Right. Like, we're not a political show. Yeah, we're not. We're not, <laughs> we're not a political show. <laughs> right. But but yeah, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. Like, like still right. Like like you were getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens though. Like I, I don't believe. I don't believe that they would divest. I, I think it'll be just like when cable companies do their thing where they, 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 they're like, okay, we can't get Nickelodeon or we can't get whomever to, what is it? Who's in charge of Nickelodeon, BT, MTV? Yeah. Was it Viacom? Yeah, Viacom. Yeah. Like oh, Viacom, yeah. and, Viacom and the cable companies always go butt heads and then what do they do? Viacom pushes out letters because they're no longer on TV or the commercials, things of that nature and, and blame the cable company and the cable companies put on their channel <laughs> the bar underneath saying that it's it's Viacom's problem. That's what's going to happen here in the States. Uh, but at the end of the day, the people who are going to be, uh, the majority of those who are going to be impacted by it don't have political capital. Like they're, they're too young. So the demographic that's not in TikTok's favor, in my opinion. So we'll see what the future holds. So definitely check us out next week <laughs> and the week after uh, to see like when this thing happens, we will definitely be back to talk about it and uh, just how weird it is and what will be done to, to stop it. Cause like, like uh, Shannon says, it's going to be very hard. Like if I were, if I were invested or thinking about investing right now, it would be Nord VPN. It would be express VPN. Like we're going to go that route. If they ban it, like people will jump on the VPNs and they'll be right back in it. So I would, I would invest, I would put my money there. <laughs> to be honest with you, but we'll see, we'll see what the future holds, but definitely continue to tune in again. Uh, we're on all types of platforms. Check us out on, uh, Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, threads, TikTok, maybe like I'm still having issues getting our stuff on there, probably because of stuff like this. Like I'm on a list somewhere. They're like, no, <laughs> he will not put his information on here. But um, they all go by they either go by the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW, or Ask Assist P, depending on the character limit of each platform. Uh, and then you can find me. I am on uh, LinkedIn, Clubhouse, 
Twitter, Threads, IG, and uh, I also write articles on LinkedIn and Medium. So you can find us on all the platforms and all the different varieties of the ways that you consume media. Subscribe to the news- newsletter. So if you can't keep up with us uh, uh, every day, we drop everything on a Friday to you as well. Deliver right to your inbox. So definitely check that out. We call it the weekly rundown, just like the episode for that Friday. Uh, and you, Chris, where can they find you? You can find me on LinkedIn or Chris Abbott on last name is so a baited. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure.